In the Old Testament book of Lamentations, it says, These things I shall think over in my heart. Therefore will I hope the mercies of the Lord that we are not consumed because his commiserations have not failed. This thought should come to mind when we read today's Holy Gospel. I just read to you that scene, but picture it in your mind's eye. There is this large funeral procession. It says that a great multitude of people from the city took part in it. The mother, who was also a widow, was following the hearse, and there was a young man dead to the world. And it's going through the town, little by little, and very slowly, somberly, everyone filled with grief and great desolation. But that day, what had happened was that the mercy of God met that procession. Christ himself, true God of true God, said in a very powerful voice, Young man, I say to thee, arise. And because when Christ commands, all of nature obeys, the young man who had been dead, his soul had departed his body. He was dead. He rose from his casket back to life. And Christ handed him over to his mother. Now the dead young man in today's gospel is the symbol of a sinner. He is dead to God's grace. He has no sanctifying grace, which alone keeps the soul alive. The widowed mother is a symbol of the Catholic Church who weeps every time that one of her children falls into sin and have lost the life of grace in their soul. The miracle that Christ performed in today's gospel is performed, in, is performed all the time in a spiritual manner in the church, right here in this little room. That is where souls are brought back to life. The dead live again. They receive life from Almighty God. That day and every day, God's mercy stops the procession of death, spiritual death in our case, and with his forgiveness, he raises our soul to life, and then we are returned to our mother, the church. That is the meaning of today's gospel. And so it is a great mercy whenever a sinner is forgiven, given yet another chance. For by mortal sin, what do we do? What is mortal sin? We know that it is a deadly sin. And for some of us, that's all we know. It is a soul that kills the life of grace. But by mortal sin, we turn our backs on the very one who loves us most, the very one who, although he might have created an angel or made a saint, chose to create us. The one who made us for the very purpose of sharing in his happiness in the beatific vision, to give us the sight of himself, to share in his very life and despite all this attention that God in his great mercy, he does not owe any of that to us. Despite all this attention shown us by God, we have chosen the creature to love the creature more than we love God. We turn our back on the God who is so good to us. And the creature, in the end, always deceives. When a sinner does this, does not he deserve to be left by God in his sins and to be lost forever? Yes, because God does not owe it to us to, 
to bring us back to life. He does not owe us. We already chose a creature over him. He no longer owes us anything. But God does repeatedly come to stop that procession, your own soul's procession downward to be lost forever. He comes and he stops the procession and he meets us halfway with his mercy. How good he is. When we consider the great mercy of God, why is it that so many souls put off doing their penance, turning back to God and to the life of grace? I could stand up here in the pulpit all day and give you many, many examples and many points, many reasons why, but I'll limit it to four very basic points that all of you know. The first is an attachment to sin, a love of sin. Now, not a single one of us sins because we love evil. Rather, whenever we are confronted to a temptation to sin, we see some good aspect to it, the pleasure, for example. And so we choose that pleasure and commit sin. We sin under the aspect of good, in other words. Many do not turn away from their sin because they feel they cannot live without them. The perfect examples would be an alcoholic who has this craving for more drink. And he cannot live without it. Or... In our day and age, I would say that sin of lust, where you cannot live without a relationship. Then there is addiction to television, internet, and all the occasions of sin that come with it. How many of us say, I can't do without my, my smartphone. I can't do without my computer. Oh, I die without it. Oh, my business is here and everything else. But I tell you, what is more important is that you save your soul. The computer's a problem. It should go out the window. But it is attachment and love of sin that prevents us from repenting. These men love their sin and cling to them. The second reason why we put it off is because it is too much work, too much spiritual labor, Works of piety and penance are always difficult. They are meant to be. But we look at them as if they were repugnant, as if it were odious to fight against temptation and to do penance. We look at all of this hard work as disgusting, and we lose courage. But this part only happens because we only look to our own strength. That's it. Our strength is nothing. We can do nothing well without God. We fail to look right there, the crucifix, where our Lord says, Come to me, all of you that labor and are burdened, and I will refresh you. The third reason why we fail to repent immediately is because of a false hope of a longer life. This is especially true for young people. But our Lord tells us, Watch, for ye know not the day nor the hour. I remember not too many years ago, one or two years ago, I remember losing two of my closest high school friends within a matter of months around Christmas time. And it brought it home that you truly do not ever know when your moment is, we can never put off conversion, thinking for a longer that we'll have a longer life. The fourth reason is presumption on God's mercy. This happens more often than we think. For when we have committed sin and God does not punish us in His justice right away, then we say, well, we'll just put off repenting. We don't say it outward like that, but that is 
what motivates us, what keeps us back, is that thought of there's no punishment, then, then I'll just wait a while. A little bit of presumption. Whereas if God were to strike you as soon as you sin, you better believe that you would be the first one in line every day for the confessional. So it is a presumption on God's great mercy. So as we, as we contemplate today's gospel and the spiritual lesson that it teaches, what are we to do practically speaking? First, very basic point, ask for the grace to fear those four points that hold us back from repentance. Attachment to sin, fear of effort, a foolish hope for a long life, and a presumption on His mercy. Ask for a hatred of those things. Second, ask our Lord to restore us to the life of grace and to the care of Holy Mother Church. And ask it through Our Lady's intercession using the indulgence prayer, My Mother, deliver me from mortal sin. And that is accompanied with three Hail Marys. What a beautiful and powerful prayer. My Mother, deliver me from mortal sin. And remember that you will only find consolation and hope in the bosom of Holy Mother Church. For what is God put there? He has given you the priesthood and the advice that the priest gives you. Sometimes, and perhaps more often than not, the laity do not want to hear what the priest has to say. Be it because they're attached to their sin or they think the priest has no right to say this or no jurisdiction, no power. Well, whatever the reason is, remember that the priest is a representative of God. God has given the priest to give you peace, to help you to heaven. Take his advice. In the church, we not only get priestly advice, but we hear the life-giving doctrines that lead to heaven. We are refreshed and made strong by the sacraments, particularly confession and holy communion. For our Lord says, if any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. He shall not die. Besides this, we have the protection of the, the angels. We have the prayers of the saints and especially of the Blessed Virgin Mary. We have the prayers and the good example of our friends and our family whose only concern is to get their loved ones into heaven. All of that is part of the church. It's a communion of saints. So, Today, the gospel is yet again a message of God's mercy. He wants you to repent today. So go to him as a loving father of a prodigal child. And then you will experience not only his mercy in this life by the forgiveness of sins, but you will experience it for all eternity where every saint will sing the same song. The mercies of the Lord I will sing forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.